Good morning, church. Oh, it is so good to see you. We are glad you're here this morning. Uh, we want to start things off by simply welcoming you. We are glad that you have joined us this morning. And we can't wait to see what our God has got in store for us today, as always. Uh, so we just want to, we're going to pray here in a sec. And uh, we're going to worship God together, as always. And uh, it's going to be a good day. Uh, you're going to be glad you came, and we are glad to have you here. Whether you're with us in the room or if you're joining us online, it's just good to have you here either way. And uh, so let's bow together, and uh, we'll pray and get this thing started. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the privilege that we have to come and to gather in your name. Uh, God, we just pray that we would always... Uh, remember to be thankful for that, God, and that we would never take that for granted. Uh, God, we pray that today, as we join together here, we just pray that you would be in our presence, God, that your Holy Spirit would just be free to move in this place. Father, we pray that through everything we do here today, we would be drawn close to you through our songs, our time of worship, God, through our time in your word. God, let everything that we do draw us close to you. God, we pray that uh, you would just uh, impact our hearts and our lives through everything that we do here today. God, we've come for you. God, we want uh, a word from you. And so we just pray that you would speak to us. God, we love you. And God, we pray it all in your precious name. Amen. Well, let's lift our voices together. We're going to praise God, and uh, man, we're just going to enjoy celebrating the greatness of who our God is and celebrating what He can do in our lives. I promise you, God can make a breakthrough in your life, and that's what this first song we're going to do today says. I believe God is going to make a breakthrough in my life. Let's lift Him up. Let's praise His name. One, two, three. Crashing over every day, God of mercy, please come rescue me. I am longing for your voice, gentle whisper in the noise, Father, tell me. Defender of my heart 
It's who you are, God, oh. And by your power, the oceans open wide. Your fire falls down. Heaven and earth collide. King Jesus, forever by my side. Sacrifice, oh Christ, how brutal yet how splendid. That tragic act of love has paid the price my sin demanded. From Eden's wilted promises to my heart's dark affection. Thy bleeding sacrifice, O oh Christ, has purchased my redemption. There was no shame that he denied, no agony more bitter. Now risen and exalted high, is Jesus Christ the Savior? Through every band of death And trampled over the darkness To give us life our very breath Our champion, oh, our glory Christ to ransom all God's children when trumpets howl and mountains shake announcing heaven's splendor the gates of New Jerusalem will open wide to greet us and every tongue on all glory unto Jesus
how Christ died for us. Man, that's something worth celebrating, isn't it? And he will come again. That is something else worth celebrating. And so is this song. This song is uh, simply and purely about celebrating our God because he is good. Let's lift it up. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head. I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able I am seen of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God. I'll sing this chorus. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after running after me Your goodness is running after running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after, running after me. I'll sing that with us. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing that chorus again. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God.
easy, I think, to sing of the goodness of God when we know Him. Because when we know Him when we, and we know how to see it, there's evidence of His goodness all around us, daily, hourly, weekly. Evidence of His greatness and His goodness to us is all around us when we know to look for it. Let's lift this song up that talks about that. One, two, three. Your faithfulness is walking beside me. The winter storms have made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All my life I see the promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life help me remember when I'm weak fear may come but fear will strength and you always will be I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life sins are rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sins are rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my Thank God, my yes 
to the prison I've worn shackles and chains But I've been freed and forgiven And I'm not going back I'll never be the same That's why I sing all my hope Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven And I've been washed by the blood There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man we'll Break him down to his knees God knows I've been broken more than a time to Yes, I have But then he picked me up And showed me what it means to be a man That's why I'm saved Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven And I've been washed by the blood Sing that chorus again Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven And I've been washed by the blood Yeah Continue worshiping just a little bit longer this morning. And the song we're going to do now reminds us simply of this fact. When we know Jesus and we see evidence of him all through our lives, when we see evidence of his goodness in our lives, when he is all of our hope, it only makes sense that we would want to listen to his word, listen to his directions and instructions, and obey. And that's what this song is about. It's simply hear the word of God and obey. That's what this song says. Let's lift it up. One, two, three. Shema Israel, Shema Israel, Adonai Elohei Shema Israel. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohei Adonai Echad, Adonai Sekenu, Adonai Yeshua Tehu Adonai Echad, Adonai Sekenu, Adonai Yeshua Tehu Baruch Shem, Kavod Mahuto Israel, Adonai, and Ohe, and Ru. Adonai, Echad, 
bow. Father, that's our prayer today, God, that we would hear and obey. And God, we pray that that would be true even during this time right now. God, let us hear your word. Uh, and God, let it be more than just words that hit our ears. God, let it be direction for our lives. God, let it change us. Let it change who we are and the way that we live right here and right now. God, we simply pray it in your precious name. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Good morning to you. It is a privilege to worship together, to sing praises to the Lord in English and in Hebrew this morning, and we are glad to be with you today, and we especially want to say hello to you if you are a guest with us today. We want to welcome those in the room who are here for the first time. We welcome those who are watching on the video stream. It's a pleasure to be with you wherever you are in the world. If you're a guest with us in the room today for the first time, I hope you received a worship guide that looks like this. And We'd love to say hello to you and greet you personally. That's what this little tear-off section is for. If you would like to, we would ask that you put a little bit of your information here so we can say hello. You can drop it in one of the offering boxes or give it to the folks at the hub so we can welcome you personally to our church. Also, every time we gather together, we ask if we can pray with you. Folks already have asked this morning for us to pray about a need in their families, and we'd love to pray for you and your family. The backside of this tear-off slip is if you'd like to write it down, or it's very easy to use the email address, prayer at firstmelissa.com, especially if you're watching online, prayer at firstmelissa.com. We will gather as a church family and as a staff and pray over those needs every week, and so we would love to lift your family up to the Lord. Many of you have asked about our 40-day shirts. There are a few more that are available to be purchased today at the Hub if you'd like. Five dollars each, you can pick one up. Inside the worship guide, you'll see it's a busy week of ministry. We just had a great Disciple Now weekend for our teenagers. It just completed. We have Tuesday morning every week at 7 a.m. on Tuesdays. We have what we call Torah Tuesday. We study the weekly Torah portion. You're invited to be a part of that. Wednesday evenings at 5.30 p.m., we have a dinner that you can register for. We have ministries for all ages at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And I have a special announcement, and because of a special guest, I'll be hosting on this Wednesday. There's his photograph. His name is Boris Grisenko. He is the senior rabbi of the largest Messianic Jewish congregation in Kiev, Ukraine. And he is going to travel from Kiev, Ukraine to Melissa, Texas, to be with us on this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to hear about what's going on in Ukraine and how the Lord is working and how people are turning to the Lord out of this wake-up call that they are living in, this horrible tragedy of the war. So you're invited to be here and right here in this room, 6.30 this Wednesday evening. Our men's conference is coming up just a couple of Saturdays from now, February the 4th. Want our guys to be a part of that? Go ahead and register, firstmelissa.com slash men. Inside the worship guide and on our website, you'll see lots more ministries that we want you to be a part of. Women's ministry events and things for the seniors and the teenagers, everything that you can be a part of. And all of the things we do, we do as a family of believers. We pray, we serve, we study, we sing, we invite friends, we volunteer, and we give to ministry. 
with our tithes and offerings. And so thank you for being a part of ministry in that way. I mentioned the offering boxes are in this room and in the foyer if you prefer to give with cash or a check. It's very simple to give electronically at the website, firstmelissa.com slash give. So thank you for doing that. You can download our church's mobile app. You can give through there, the Venmo app, other ways to give, even cryptocurrency if you choose to do that. Lots of ways to give to ministry so all of us have a chance to be a part of what God is doing here. And this morning is the next step in our journey, our 40 days of faith journey. And we have titled this year's theme, Growth. How do we grow as a follower of Jesus? That has been our prayer. That has been our focus for now three Sundays. We're doing this in our Sunday morning worship services, our Wednesday evening worship services. That's what I'll be visiting with Rabbi Boris about, about how to grow in the midst of a crisis this Wednesday evening. It's part of our small groups. It's part of our kids ministry and adult ministry. It's also a daily opportunity for you. I hope you have picked up a notebook like this. There's One's at the tables outside. There's also a way to download it as a PDF. A daily reading guide that will help you through these 40 days to focus on your spiritual journey and your spiritual growth. And we're doing this for 40 days because we see all over the Bible that example of the number 40 in a period of time. 40 days or 40 months or sometimes 40 years. It's a growing time and a learning time and a relationship building time with the Lord. And our focus has been on Colossians 1 verse 10, the theme verse we've picked for the series. Our prayer for the members of our body of believers is this, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. Our daily lives, how we walk, how we conduct ourselves every day, we want to be worthy of the Lord. We want to honor his name. We want to be fully pleasing to him. We want to bear fruit in every good work. We want it to be noticeable, not obnoxious, but noticeable that we walk with God, that people can see there's a change in our lives. And mostly that is a result of growing in the knowledge of God, growing in understanding who he is and what his word has to say. And so for these six Sundays, over these 40 days, that's exactly what we're doing. And we're using the very simple outline, G-R-O-W and T-H, the six letters to guide us. We began with the idea that our Father gives us all we need. Our culture is consumed with looking for the next thing, the next entertainment, the next possession, the next opportunity. We look for the next thing because what we have found so far in the culture doesn't satisfy us. And when we realize that our Father gives us all we need, in fact, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Every good gift that the Father has offered to us. It's actually in James 1, 17. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. So if the father wants to give me a good gift, he is able because he is God. And he wants to because he's a good, good father. And he gives us wisdom and he gives us joy and he gives us hope and he gives us purpose in life. But the most important gift of all, he offers us the gift of eternal life by placing our faith in Jesus. So that was the first week, the letter G. Then we began next, which was last Sunday, the letter R. Realize who you are. We studied a lot of passages. We gave you, in fact, a whole list of biblical uh, explanations about who we are as followers of Jesus. But fundamentally, it begins by following the Savior by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works. So that no one may boast. We do not come to a relationship with a holy God by our actions. We don't have to convince him. We don't have to, to change his mind or ask him to open his heart. He has opened his heart to us. And we come by faith, not by our good works. But when our lives are changed, 
We now have that purpose in life. So we come to him by faith, not by works. We come by faith. But when we come and now we begin a relationship with the Father, he gives us our spiritual assignment. Because Ephesians 2.10 says we are his workmanship. That Greek noun poema that you could translate masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. God has a plan for you. And God has a plan for you, and God has a plan for you, and they're all different. They're all unique. And so we finished one of our thoughts last week by showing you that as a follower of Jesus, you are God's workmanship, his masterpiece. He created you to know him, to know him personally, and to love him. Not know about him from a distance, but to know him personally, to love him, and then to serve him. In that order. Don't serve a God you don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but the God you know and the God you love, you want to serve him. And we asked a very important question, how do you do that? How do you take what is promised and turn it into the actual? Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. The life that I live as a follower of Jesus, the life that you live as a follower of Jesus, is not your life anymore because that's part of salvation, that's part of surrender, is I give it away. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. So how do you do that? It says, I live by faith. How do you do living by faith? Well, in the Gospel of John chapter 15, Jesus said, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. This is an amazing thought. When we begin to understand the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, when we understand that Jesus lived on this earth as a man, a Jewish Torah observant man in the land called Israel 2,000 years ago, he lived on the earth as a man, but he is eternally God. And God the Father, God the Son have an eternal relationship of love. And Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. So as God the Father loves God the Son, that same type of love God the Son offers to you and to me. And the next statement he says is abide in me. Abide is a Greek verb, meno, to dwell, to remain, to not depart. It means don't go away from it. Don't leave it. So when Jesus said, the Father loves me and I love you in exactly the same way, that ought to be so attractive to us that we cannot distance ourselves from that. We abide there, we dwell there because we all want to be loved. We all want to be loved unconditionally. We all want to be loved by the one who created us. Abide in my love. That's John 15, 9. But what about John 15, 10? Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Do you see the parallel? It's there for the second time. As God the Father loves God the Son, God the Son loves you. And as God the Son obeyed the calling on his life of God the Father. So we are to obey the commandments, the calling, the mission, the assignment on our lives that God the Son gives us. So we ask the question is, how do you walk by faith? Jesus says, abide in my love. Well, what is an example of abiding in his love? It's that I... Observe his commandments. And that's the next part of our outline. The letter O, observe the commandments of God. 
abide in his love by hearing him and following him. Now, we just read from John 15, but I want to put on the screen now John 14. Verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you've been around church for a while, you've learned the Greek verb or the noun in this case, agape. If you love me, it's written as a verb here, but the noun is agape. If you have this heavenly, unconditional kind of love. You will keep my commandments. You say, why? why? Why is my obedience an indicator of my love? Because if I give my heart to Jesus, if I come to him by faith, and then he gives me a mission, an assignment, and I think about it and go, no, not really, and just walk away. What has that said about my love? My love's not that deep. My love is conditional, not unconditional. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Next verse from John 14 says, Jesus speaking, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. And this is important. Do you know why? Because we say, yes, I want to obey you and follow you and be faithful to your calling on my life, but I just can't do it by myself. Sometimes it's a woe is me pity thing. I'm just, you know, I don't know how to do it. And sometimes it's an honest thing. I don't know how to do this. So Jesus said, the Father's going to give you another helper. That he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Because see, Jesus lived on this earth as a man. We mentioned it. Torah observant Jew in the land of Israel for 33 years. But at the end of his assignment on earth, he left. He ascended to heaven. So Jesus was no longer physically with his followers. For 30 Three years he lived on this earth. For over three years he ministered with them. He he sat down and had dinner with them. He went fishing with them. But when he physically left the earth, they thought they had been abandoned. And Jesus said, no, the Father's going to send you another helper, the Holy Spirit. Called here the Spirit of Truth. It says, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. Do you know why a person receives the Holy Spirit? It's because they've surrendered their heart to the Savior. It says... The world does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. See, we were called to abide in Jesus, to meno. Remember the verb, meno, to remain or not depart? We were called to abide with Jesus. The Spirit is called to abide with us because we've been given this gift of salvation. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We say, how are we going to be able to do that? God says, I'm going to give you a helper, the Holy Spirit. Next verse, John 14, this is now verse 18. Jesus still speaking. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you and in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. In that underlined verse, Jesus said, he who has my commandments. That's what? That's knowledge. And keeps them is the one who loves me. You could say it this way. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. You say you love me. That's talk. But it's the action that demonstrates your love. He who has my commandments, so you have to learn, you have to know, and then keeps them. That's the obedience part. 
is the one who loves me. So our focus today is to learn how, as followers of Jesus, Yeshua, the Savior, how to observe his commandments. And so I want to show you verses from the book of Deuteronomy now. You can turn there in your own Bible if you'd like or your own phone app or look on the screen. It's early part of your Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. And Jesus has just told us, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, remain, abide with me. But that's New Testament. And it was written about 2,000 years ago, Jesus said it to his disciples. But about 1,400 years before that, God gave a very similar teaching through Moses to the people of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy. If you aren't sure where we are on your biblical timeline, the people of Israel have left Egypt. They were slaved in Egypt for 430 years and God called Moses to lead the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land. They ended up spending 40 years wandering around the wilderness. You see a map, see that big thing that looks like a triangle in the middle of the map, officially called the Sinai Peninsula. The people of Israel leave Goshen, the northern part of Egypt and they wander around the Sinai Peninsula for 40 years until they enter the promised land. 40 years. Why? Because previously Moses had sent 12 spies into the land to do a recon mission to scout it out. And they came back and 10 of them said, the people are too big and too strong and the armies are too powerful. We can't take over that land. And two of them said, yes, their army might be strong, but our God is bigger than they are. And what did the people do? They listened to the 10 negative reports. And so for every day, Day, they didn't trust God on that 40-day recon mission. They spent a year in the wilderness, 40 years. And as they are about to enter the promised land, the book of Deuteronomy is a series of sermons by Moses, giving them the final instructions before they are to enter the land. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1, Moses is speaking to the people of Israel. And he says, this is the commandment. It's the Hebrew word mitzvah. This is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it. See, Moses was not going to enter the promised land. That's why he never says we. He says you. When you go there, you do this. Not we, because Moses wasn't going. But he says, these are the commandments that the Lord told me to teach you that you might do them. Because remember, it's not enough to just hear it. It's doing it. That you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it so that you and your son and your grandson, future generations, might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you today, all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. See, it's not enough to hear it. It's do it. It's observe it. It's keep it. It's obey it. It continues in verse 3. O Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you. And that you may multiply greatly just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. See, it starts with listen. And then it gets to doing it. But here is the phrase, be careful. Means what? Pay attention. Concentrate. Focus. Make this a priority. There's a lot of things we do that we're not careful about. Because we just we don't care. We're just doing it. But this should be a priority. It should be important. So hear it. Listen to what he has to say. Be careful and do it all the days of your life. And then you get to verse 4. And it says, hear, O Israel. Listen up, O Israel. The Lord is our God. 
the Lord is one, the one and only. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. A little Hebrew for you. You you get English, Greek, and Hebrew today. On your heart, the noun labab. The word soul is the Hebrew noun nephesh. And it says with all your might, which is the Hebrew word ma'od. But you need to understand that ma'od doesn't mean might. Sometimes people translate it with all your strength, which is fine. Except ma'od doesn't mean strength either. You know what it means? Your very, your extremely. Love the Lord your God with all your very. Now that's not really savvy in English, so the translators came up with something. Do we put life? Do we put strength? Do we put power? Do we put money? Do we put time? Do we put might? We gotta put something, because people in English won't understand what it means, serve God with all your very. But that's what it means. You're everything. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your maod, all your everything, all your very, all your extremely. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. Maybe when you leave here, you start singing songs that Kevin's been singing or you're on the radio and you listen and the song won't get out of your head, right? That's what this is. It should be always on your heart. Heart, always in your head. Verse 7 now, Deuteronomy 6. You shall teach them diligently to your sons. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. So, teach them. Don't keep it to yourself. Teach them. Diligently. Like have a plan. Have a strategy. When you sit down. When you're just hanging out at home, sitting on the couch. When you sit down. When you walk by the way, when you get up and leave, when you go to work, when you go wherever, when you walk by the way, at night when you lie down, in the morning when you rise up. So at home and away from home, at night in the morning, all the time, all the places, teach them. And even you could take the step of making it a literal observance. Verse 8 says, you shall bind them on your hand and they'll be frontals on your forehead and Hebrew is called tefillin you see these boxes that some of our orthodox Jewish friends wear and those boxes on the left arm it's wrapped up from the hand and it goes all the way up to the left bicep and it sits on the left bicep you know why because that's closest to the heart and then you put it on your forehead and inside that little box has scripture and guess what the scripture is Deuteronomy 6 And the next verse, verse 9 says, you shall write them on the doorposts on your house and on your gates. If you go out this front door and look, you may never have noticed it. There's a mezuzah hanging on the front door of this church right out there. Because it says, put this on the doorpost of your house. Inside of that little metal thing hanging on the wall right outside this church building is scripture. And you know what scripture it is? Deuteronomy chapter 6. So, he says, make this a priority for you. Make this something you focus on. Now, we're going to go back a few verses now and focus in. We just read Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You just sang this. When you were singing that last song, if you didn't know what you were singing, this is what you were singing. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And the verb in Hebrew for listen up. Pay attention is the word shema. So we've written it in English for you. We've written it in Hebrew, and there it is, what's called transliterated, the English letters. But Hebrew's right to left. So the circle on the right is the first word of the sentence, and it's the word shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only. Now, what does shema mean? What does obey the Lord? mean it means hearing but learning following obeying here's the sentence where it involves listening to the spoken word this term implies an engagement with the mind an attentive listening even a sense of heed by acting or putting to practice 
When God calls Israel to hear, he expects more than just a listening. He expects action. The quote continues, Shema beckons us to not only hear the words of God, but to take them into the very center of our being and doing. In other words, God expects a listening with a view toward doing. Now, the most famous instance of the word Shema in your Old Testament is right there in Deuteronomy 6, but it's in other places as well. And you'll see it translated into English sometimes a little differently. Look, Exodus 19 verse 5, it's about us. God says, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. There it is. Psalm 115, they have ears, but they cannot hear. Proverbs 20, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. The Lord has made both of them. Those, that's when the word Shema is used about us. Sometimes it's even used about God. There's a prayer, a prayer given in Psalm 27, verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Be gracious to me and answer me. You're asking God to Shema. Don't just hear me, but act. Do something with my prayer. Because you may have learned here already that there's no Biblical Hebrew word for obey. The word, when you read it in English, is obey. It's the word shema. To listen and to do it. And another quote on the screen. This is very, very accurate about our culture. Today, we, before we obey, we usually go through a three-part process. We hear what God says. We evaluate the command based on our understanding and we then make a choice to obey based upon our evaluation. Why? Because we do this with everything. So we do it with God. You say, buy this car, buy this house, join this group, buy this book, watch this movie. We, somebody gives us an assignment and we evaluate it. Well, I like the movie. Well, I like the book. And do I need to buy that car? We evaluate it and then we make a decision based upon that. Well, see, because we treat everybody else that way, we treat God that way. He gives us an assignment through his word and we think about it and go, well, I, do I need to do this? Do I want to do this? Will I like it? Will I enjoy it? Is it cool? Is it popular? And then we decide whether or not to obey based upon our evaluation of that. This is a very Western mindset, a very Greek mindset. But, parents, you may have given an assignment to your children, like clean your room, and you go back an hour later and the room's not clean, and you say, what happened? And they say, well, I heard you. And the parent just might say, I don't want you to hear me. I want you to shema me. I don't want you to hear me and ignore it. I want you to hear me and do it. You know what Jesus might say to us. I don't want you to hear me. I want you to shma me. Because we do it to him just like we have done it to our parents or our friends. Oh, I heard you. No, I didn't want to. But what did Jesus say? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Here's another quote for you. The opening line, listen, O Israel, does not simply mean to let the sound waves enter your ears. The word hear or listen means to allow the words to sink in, provide understanding, and generate a response. In Hebrew, hearing and doing are basically the same thing. But what is Israel to do in response to hearing that the Lord alone is their God? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your maod. And the quote says, love isn't simply the warm, fuzzy, emotional energy we feel when we like someone. In the Bible, love is action. You love someone when you act in loyalty and faithfulness. For Israel to love meant faithful obedience to the terms of their covenant relationship. And that quote continues... Here. Obedience to these laws was never about legalism or trying to earn God's favor. Obedience in the Old Testament is about love and listening. 
If an Israelite loves God, it will make it easier to listen and absorb his teachings and guidance. This is why the words listen and love are so tightly connected and repeated throughout these speeches of Deuteronomy. What did Jesus say? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. But why would I, a sinful person, why would I choose to Obey the commandments of God. Why? Well, here's three answers for you. Number one, because he as the heavenly father loves me. And if he loves me, he will not give me an assignment that is for my destruction. He will never lead me down a path. We've all met people who tried to get us to do something because they wanted to hurt us. They wanted to trick us. They wanted to lie to us. They wanted to embarrass us or bring shame to us. Well, as the heavenly father, the good, good father, he will never give me an assignment or a mission or a calling that is to my detriment. So why would I want to obey him? Because he loves me. Secondly, because as the creator and the king of the universe, he deserves it. Again, we've all gotten a... a, a mission or an assignment from from some of our dopey friends and they don't deserve to be listened to. But he's the creator of heaven and earth. And number three, because I as his creation need him. Again, one of your dopey friends gives you an assignment. You don't need them. But as the creation, I need the creator what Psalm 18 verse 30 teaches us. As for God, his way is blameless. He's not going to lead you down the wrong path. He's not going to lead you to a place of shame and embarrassment just so he can laugh at you. His way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried. It means it's tested. It's proven reliable. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. In fact, not only will my God not lead me to a path of shame and ruin, But if somebody else leads me to the path of shame and ruin, he's the only place I can turn to in the middle of that because he is our refuge. Why would I obey him? Because he loves me and he deserves it and I need him. So we're talking in this whole series about growth, spiritual growth. And our spiritual growth is part of who we are. And one result of that spiritual growth is that others will notice our walk with Jesus. This is our hope, is that we will bear fruit. Remember what Colossians 1 said. That we will bear fruit, that people will be able to see there's been a change in our lives. So this statement says, if we love Yeshua and faithfully observe his commandments, we will serve as witnesses of his grace. People will look at you And look at you and look at you and say, something's different about you. Something's different about you. I see the fruit of your life. They may not use that word, but that's what they mean. And so people notice because you don't lie in school and you don't cheat in the business world. They notice. And we become witnesses of his grace. That's exactly what Jesus meant In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, even to the remotest part of the earth. You will be my witnesses. Now, I need you to follow this because this is going to blow your mind. If we are spiritually growing, people will notice it. And we become his witnesses. And Jesus said, as he was ascending to heaven, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. What did he say back in the Gospel of John? He will abide in you, and you will be my witnesses. Now watch this. Look on the screen. It's written in Hebrew, the Shema, again, on the top of the screen. But it's written, it's printed in this case, the way it's printed in a siddur, which is a prayer book. It's not like typed on a computer. This is how it's printed in a prayer book. And it starts on the right because, again, 
Hebrews, right to left, and it says Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ahad. I promise that's what it says right there. Okay? But look how it's typed in a prayer book. See, the first word is Shema. It's on the right in Hebrew. It's on the left in English. It's circled. But you see the last letter of that word? It's big. It's a bigger font, we would say. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ehad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Look at the next slide. That letter that's the last letter of the first word is the letter Ayin. I promise, it's what it is. And then the last letter of the last word is the Hebrew letter Dalit. It's like a D. Okay? Adonai Ehad. It's the D. Follow me? So, the whole line is printed in a prayer book. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. That's what that says. But two letters are in a big font. You see them? The ayin on the first word, the dalit on the last word. Everybody tracking? Why in the world would the scribes, when they write a prayer book, take two letters out of all those letters and make them bigger font? Because if you take just those two letters, the ayin... And the Dalit, you put them together and it makes the Hebrew word Aid. And you know what it means? Witness. What did Jesus say? Go be my witnesses. How do I become a witness for Jesus? Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. If you know him, if you believe in him, if you love him, if you obey him, you will be his witness. Because that's our assignment. But being a witness is not easy. Being a witness is not popular. So look at this idea. To live an obedient life, a Shema life, it's not going to be celebrated by the people in your school or your workplace or your social group. It's surely not going to be celebrated in the media and the politics of this culture. So it requires courage to do what is right. And that's why we read in the book of Joshua chapter, six, uh, chapter 1 verse 6. This is now God speaking to Joshua after Moses has died. Be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do. See it? Not hear it. Not learn it. Not listen. Do it. According to all the Torah, all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. And it continues, Joshua 1, now verse 8. This book of the Torah, the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be able, uh, be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In four verses, three times, God said, be courageous. And he said, meditate, means listen, do it, learn, I mean, listen, learn it, hear it. And then he said, do it. Because what did we say our prayer was this week? That we would understand that our God gives us all we need. That we would realize who we are. And that we would observe his commandments. We would shema his commandments, which leads us to our last scripture for the day. 1 John chapter 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, is born of God. And whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and do what? Observe his commandments. That's what we've been talking about all day is observe the commandments. But here's the problem. We look at the commandments of God and the world tells us they're a big bummer. They rob you. They cheat you. They're a bummer. That's why the author says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. It is not a chore to obey God. It is a gift to obey the loving 
assignments of a heavenly father. Our father gives us all we need. Realize who you are and then observe his commandments. This is how growth happens. And when we observe his commandments, we become what? His witnesses to the world that we've been changed by the Jesus that we serve and that we proclaim. This is our growth. And this is our prayer. So let's bow together. As we bow, I'm going to ask some of the folks from our prayer ministry to come. They'll pray with you personally afterwards. Father, we want to grow because we want to know you. We want to understand your word and your will. We want to hear it and then we want to obey it. So would you please help us be better hearers and be better doers. And Father, in a dark world, you've called us to be the light, to be your witnesses. So please help us to show someone else, even this week, what it means to follow after our Savior. And we pray this prayer in his name. Amen. These folks are here to pray with you if you'd like. Blessings to you. We hope to see you on Tuesday or Wednesday.